Here on the bench you see all 12 major components of a variable speed DC motor plus two tools that was featured in another video as part of a treadmill. Well, I have taken the motor apart and cleaned absolutely everything. In this video I'm going to show you and explain what necessitated taking the motor apart in the first place to this degree. I will then continue with focusing on the worn components, those two bearings there. In the discussion about bearings, I will talk about bearing size, bearing wear, bearing failure and the cost of replacement parts. I will compare the observations that can be made on the worn components against company claims that are publicly available on the manufacturer's website about the bearings rated life. The rated life means how long are those bearings supposed to last versus so that's the claims versus the fact how long did it actually last. So that's all part of the discussion about bearings. I will also have some removal and assembly notes as well as mechanical and, ele and electrical notes as I go along. This entire video is not a tutorial. This is not a lesson. This is a show and tell of what's involved in a motor rebuild. Okay, I'm not going to teach you how to work safely around electricity or how to use tools, whatever. I'm not telling you what you should or shouldn't do. You figure that one out for yourself. I'm telling you what's involved. So let's start at the beginning. What was the problem? The owner obviously noted that over years the bearing, the motor, became noisier and noisier in operation. This excessive noise necessitated the TV to be louder and louder because that's how the treadmill was used. Uh, exercise done on treadmill right next to a TV. So, this fact was also supplemented by some numbers and the owner tells me that in total there is about 2000 operating hours on the treadmill. Walking, jogging and running was done on the treadmill. Uh, two and a quarter hours of exercise a week combined everything so over a spread of 17 years this amounts to about 2000 hours of wear on everything now the motor is brilliantly designed and almost all wear by design is concentrated in the bearings whereas replacing bearings doesn't make everything else new no everything else will be used but almost all the wear shows up only in the bearings the other wear components are carbon brushes I'm gonna show you get your close-ups we'll discuss and explain what those carbon brushes do and how they wear they are very easily both wear components bearings and brushes are easily accessible reasonably easily accessible they are meant to be replaced and serviced because the motor is meant to last with these wear components so replacement cost for bearings six dollars each carbon brushes if you need them about five dollars each I ordered bearings so that's how I know it's six dollars each in 2019 now I don't know what cost of brushes but about five dollars each both bearings and brushes like I said very easily available widely available easily accessible in terms of motor you need to remove two bolts and everything comes apart the end plates are on both ends of the housing the end plates come off two bolt holds everything two bolts hold everything together and this is all the components you have really really straightforward and simple but again I'm not telling you what you should or shouldn't do but this is the big picture idea so the owner threw away the entire treadmill worth thousands of dollars on account of two worn bearing costing twelve dollars okay two bearings versus thousands of dollars for a new treadmill truth be told there was another glitch with the treadmill it wasn't working electrically one of the quick connectors elsewhere in the wiring harness a quick connector looks like this slipped off the terminal of a switch inside the console or the control, pa control panel of the machine so the machine was electrically dead as well as noisy it was noisy first then it went dead later on so the owner threw away the whole machine in terms of time involvement it took me five minutes to find the fault the electrical fault in the in the uh, console of the machine and plug it back in 
and then the machine was fully functional replacing the, the bearings uh, taking everything apart cleaning putting everything back together is an hour and a half so an hour and a half plus five minutes is all the time it took to make the uh, treadmill fully functional and in terms of costs putting the wire back in place cost zero dollars and those two bearings like I said six dollars each if you need brushes those are about five dollars each so there versus thousands of dollars spent on a new and fancy treadmill that you pay for I guess years whatever on in installments so that's the big picture idea here with serviceable easily accessible parts that are designed this motor is designed to last and these parts are designed to be accessible so let's take a look at the nameplate on the motor here before we look at the bearings the motor is Leeson branded I'm gonna rotate this for glare and it looks like this Leeson direct current permanent magnet motor that's part number model number catalog number runs on 100 volts DC direct current RPM is 5190 that's gonna be needed for the bearing life calculator coming up later 14.4 amps makes 1.62 horsepower is also on this sticker here and this is just everything else listed on it there so that's what's on the nameplate now let's look at this bearing the bearings are of course rotated located on the motor's shaft right around approximately there so that's how they look like that's how you pull them out that's how they look like and that's how you pull them out from the housing the bearing itself comes with seals in place I pull these seals off to show you where in the bearing if the motor makes excessive noise the bearings are worn just order new one new ones the seals snap in place like so the edge of the seal goes into a groove here in the outer plate and the the outer ring and the inner ring fairly straightforward and the worn bearings over time become squealy like this they run they roll they turn happily but this is a worn bearing excessively squealy same for the other one maybe a little less squealy but nevertheless just as bad and over time bearings develop excessive clearances internally what this means is that as the bearings as the rolling element the bearing balls roll against the inner plate sorry inner ring and the outer ring the contacting metal surfaces it doesn't matter how well this is greased there is metal on metal contact inside eventually some metal will be lost this metallic or metal dust gets then embedded in the grease that this bearing is normally filled with but of course the grease on the outside here right underneath the seal does nothing to reduce the friction or do something against the wear on where that which shows up here where the bearing balls and the outer ring or the bearing ball and the inner ring meet on the inside there so bearing so gear grease on the outside here doesn't really have a whole lot nevertheless it's filled with grease to to minimize the chance of uh, moisture getting in but that's another consideration in bearing design so wear happens it's a fact of life just like a baby since the second it is born or conceived it's aging okay likewise with every rotation that the bearing takes the metal on metal contact of the rolling element the bearing ball the inner ring the outer ring metal will be lost at those contact points over time those particles get embedded in the grease I wash them out so so this can be observed this way and rotate freely the bearing is squealy but most importantly have excessive clearances inside because of the lost metal the gapage between rolling element and ring 
increase both rings. So, new bearings are made with tiny clearances uh, on the micrometer range. Sorry, this is a metric bearing, but to visualize it, thousands of an inch is the clearance between new bearing rolling element and inner inner outer rings and those clear initial clearances with the wear subtracting metal those clearances increase over time so the gap is bigger and bigger and bigger eventually the gaps it cannot be seen it needs to be felt like this okay as well as the bearing becomes a rattle if you shake them this way this is radial play on the bearing the components move up and down and this is axial play side to side you get the idea it's a rattle both ways because of the increasing internal clearances so this is gradual the bearing rotates inside the end cap and at the front here this is the front this spring washer is located it's not bent it's a springy shape like this the bearing is aligned or will go in there it's a it's a snug fit I really don't want to force it in without any lubricant but but it might pop in on its own and when this bearing is pressed in place on the motors on the rotors shaft tight against this shoulder here like so with a proper bearing installation tool in rotation this is how they look like okay so the inner ring is rotating like so the outer ring is stationary so this is why the motor is designed to last because all the rotation now are concentrated inside the bearing the end plate is stationary the motor shaft doesn't wear because the bearing is seated solidly on it it's stuck on it like so so the shaft rotates with the inner with the inner ring on the bearing okay i hope that makes sense so all mechanical wear here is located or isolated to the bearing so this is a tight fit uh, let's see if i can take it out maybe not maybe this way there. so this end plate is critical together with the other one they line up the rotating part inside the stationary part the stator the rotor they line up the rotating part the clearance between the rotors are laminated ion core and the magnets the permanent magnets that are glued in place here is tiny so tiny clearance between rotating part and stationary part if the bearings sorry if the housing is cracked and this alignment of the shaft is compromised the laminated core is gonna hit and gouge the magnet it's not gonna be working happily it's gonna be if you crack the housing then it's not gonna line up the rotor okay so that's an assembly note this is cast aluminum it's brittle so take care of it don't drop it don't hit it with a hammer either the other flat washer lives inside there underneath underneath those commutator segments that we're gonna look at in a sec I'm just gonna make sure this doesn't rotate or fall I want to point out that those commutator are that the uh, carbon brushes come in contact with the commutator segments here you can see this dark band here this is where the carbon brushes are in contact with you can see the curvature in the edge of the carbon brush it doesn't look like a toothbrush or whatever it's just called a brush all right so you see the curved surfaces there they correspond to the curvature of the commutator segments the commutator segments also wear the brushes also wear 2000 hours of wear operating hours on everything but 
the brushes have enough length in them, in them. they are perfectly functional as is. S sorry about that. Same applies to the commutator segments. These copper segments here have enough, you see the gap between each of them, there's enough depth in the gap, sorry, in the commutes, in the segments themselves, you can see the depth of the gap there. They are worn all right, but there's enough depth left there in them. This is perfectly serviceable, flawless commutator there. Also, in the bearing removal process, proper tools need to be used, of course, because this is this bearing when it's in place is against the shoulder, this close to the commutator. If the commutator gets damaged, gouged out, whatever, it's not going to be helping the electrically the motor. It's going to be compromised. If the varnishing here, this is not a chewing gum, this is how it comes from the factory, okay? If the, the wire is coated or uh, varnished, if this varnish gets compromised, the wires get scratched or one of them breaks, the whole thing will not work. So take care of the wires, take care of the laminated iron core, the commutator segments, the shaft shouldn't be bent. Okay, so those are some assembly notes. On account of trying to remove the six dollar bearings, the whole a new replacement motor is in the five to eight hundred dollar range, something like that. The commutator segments, like I said, are in contact with these brushes, and these brushes are spring loaded. For assembly, they need to be pushed out of the way and kept this way. How this is done is fairly straightforward. The spring has a shape, as you can see, this ring here that appears there. You can put a wooden dowel through that ring. To keep the carbon brush in this position away from the commutator segments and uh, the motor can be assembled this way and when everything is in place remove the dowels these will spring forward come in contact with the commutator installation will be complete that way let me show you the springs that move the spring moves forward and then comes out like so. So this is the spring and in normal operation it does this. Okay, you get the idea. And the carbon brush is made of graphite, same as your pencil lead. Very soft and it's leaving these marks on my finger. Very soft form of carbon. This comes out of this uh, brush housing here, this $5 part here with the wire in it, and this quick connector again is easily replaceable. So, this part is also $5, so that's the housing. Electrically, the housing one of them is red wire, one of them is positive, the other one is negative, and both are electrically insulated. They are installed on this fiberglass or fiber plate, and the ground screw, the green one, is, con is leading through a clearance hole there to connect to the housing. The housing with this ground wire is connected electrically to the rest of the wiring harness and other a ground screw eventually that bolts into the frame of the machine somewhere. Okay, ground wire to ground wire. These eyes at the end of the wire connect together, goes into a frame, so that's grounding. The red wire and black wire installed on red and black just like on a car's battery they install uh, one positive one negative on the circuit board with the big uh, capacitor on it on those two terminals if you didn't label them which one goes where or didn't take a picture of it just connect them any which order you like the motor will work it will either rotate the track in the correct direction or in the opposite direction. If the track on the treadmill is running in the opposite direction, the wires need to be switched around. If the track is running the correct way, just leave it alone. So, 
met some electrical notes. Oh, what these are, these are some plastic uh, cover plates here that just snap in place, like so. Air can circulate underneath there, so the brushes are accessible without taking apart the motor to this degree. So that's how the carbon brushes here function. A little bit of discussion about the housing and the magnet. The magnet is brittle, as I pointed out earlier. The brushes are brittle, don't drop them. The end plates are brittle aluminum, they crack and break on contact with, you know, impact with concrete floor, whatever. Same applies to these magnets. The magnets have a gap there at 6 o'clock and at 12 o'clock position. This is where the bolts obviously will install the magnets are strong so this is going to be a bit of a fight trying to put the bolts through at the 6 o'clock position here and the 12 o'clock position there you get the idea so the magnets of course are only strong on the outside on the inside they don't seem to be magnetic from the outside so for removal removal and assembly of the rotor have one person put a hand on this thing when you're pulling the rotor out from it significant force is needed to pull the rotor out because the magnet is very strong the whatever part of the motor is sticking out from the housing grab it pull on it pull on it more as some of it gets exposed so pull on it until it's all out once it's once the uh, core uh, segments here cleared the magnet the skinny shaft part is gonna get attracted to the magnet of course on impact the magnet might shatter or might chip I'll show you how that looks like I didn't chip it but the magnet has some factory chips on it that one and that one okay so this is a brittle magnet I did chip it there so there shouldn't be any loose chips in it floating the rotating part the clearance between the stationary magnet and the edge of the rotor is so tiny that there shouldn't be any kind of grinding of chips floating flying inside gouging out the wires on the rotor or anything such so don't chip your magnets because they will chew up the wires or the commutator segments somewhere if you have loose magnet bits ground inside okay now lastly about the bearing claims the bearings have a designation which is printed that's like its license plate printed on the seal and it's a four digit number the you can see NSK is the manufacturer USA and here is the four digit number 6203 that's what it says maybe not beautifully printed on here's maybe a little easier to read 6203 and then V V describes the number of seals and the material of the seals and the placement of the seals for the bearings on SKFs the seal designation is different but the bearings are sealed the same way double sided the 6203 number is important here so it's the same bearing which is 40 millimeters on the outside like so 17 millimeters on the inside here and 12 millimeters wide or thick there like I said everything metric it's metric bearing so this page just tells you the bearing designation number and physical dimensions as well as there are some numbers here about that you can use for bearing life calculations but why bother when you can just enter everything in a bearing calculator you need four numbers RPM and I picked 2500 like half steam why not it's also coming from the owners account of how the machine was used it was never used on full power so 2500 why not for RPM a load needs to be entered for these bearings and 
I estimated 200 kilograms. Now, on a treadmill, the load is a cyclical shock load. At every footfall, the RPM drops a little bit, and uh, when you are mid-air, none of your feet touch the track on the treadmill, then there's no load on it. And then, as soon as you make a footfall and contact with the track, uh, the RPM is going to drop microscopically for a millisecond or whatever short amount of time. Okay, so RPM goes up, drops down, goes up, drops down because uh, that's how you are uh, even at walking pace. Alright, now the two bearings can be entered either in two different calculators or two different ca uh, configurations. They can be entered as a system on a shaft like so, distance apart, whatever, take a measurement, whatever, 100 and something millimeters apart when properly pressed in place. You can see where they go. Just go center to center measurement and so load and I just went 200 kilograms force is about 2 kilonewtons on a single bearing. So I just went with that trying to estimate the given the shock load or cyclical load nature of use on a bearing plus it's always tensioning the belt as well there's a big flywheel or pulley wheel on it that's tensioning the track 24 7 so that load is always on it so with all that in mind I just went with 200 kilograms force 2 kilonewton what I got out of it and of course a couple of other things need to be entered go and explore uh, so one of them is uh, sorry this is the bearings dimension one of them is temperature you see temperature somewhere on the paper on S on NSK's website this is NSK's paper they claim that a new bearing should last 4,000 hours plus change nearly what is it nearly 5,000 hours operating hours so that's what they claim. Sure, this one has about 2,000 hours of wear in it and it's quite annoyingly noisy. Mm, yeah. On SKF's website, it's part of a system entered as on a horizontal shaft with inner ring rotation. And they calculate or estimate that it's only going to last 2,000 hours plus change. So, uh, opinion between. NSK and SKF obviously differ, nevertheless, and, and this is uh, two bearings on a shaft and this is also from SKF and uh, this is just a single bearing in isolation if I remember well. So one paper for one, the other one for the other, something like that, with uh, the operating temperature entered 30 degrees, you can pick 40, whatever, just estimate something for operating temperature. And you can read in the drop down menus what uh, radial clearance of the new bearing, you know, the internal gaps, internal gaps of the new bearing are so tiny they are really practically unobservable this way or this way, even if you remove the seals, wash out everything from it. So, but nevertheless, it's a, it's a thing you can measure, you can uh, order tighter clearances or normal clearances depending on uh, what you what you select read the drop down menus on an online calculator if you want to play with it so 2000 hours basically is what uh, the calculator comes up with for skf bearings repeatedly either which way bearings will wear with every single rotation and over time they need to be replaced again but the housing doesn't wear the shaft doesn't wear the stationary components, the bolts don't wear, everything just needs a cleaning and the two tools for removing the bolts is a 10 millimeter wrench and an 11 millimeter wrench you know, one for the head, the other one for the nut so, lastly, placing these uh, bolts will be a bit of a challenge because they are attracted to the magnet so one of them goes in the 6 o'clock position the other at the 12 o'clock position this is going to be a little bit of fighting even if the housing uh, guides them to, or keeps them in place to some degree, uh, assembly will be finicky and needs a little TLC. But this is basically what's involved. Thank you very much for watching.
you can save yourself thousands of dollars on buying a new machine by replacing two six dollar bearings and maybe two, two five dollar brushes if they are worn.